sit out and just sit down and go, well, cars are so mysterious. Who knows why one goes and another doesn't? <laughs> You would not accept that this is just your fate. You now are a person with a non-moving vehicle. And that's how it's going to be for you. No, you, you know that cars are designed to run on some pretty basic elements. Fuel, air, and ignition. And so something must be squirreled up with one of those three and, and we just got to fix it, right? I mean, you wouldn't put up with a car that didn't run. Why would we accept a congregation where no new people started following Jesus with us? Why would we just throw our hands up and say, well, I don't know what to do now that people who join just don't keep coming? Why would we accept it as our fate? Huh, who's to say why one congregation goes and another doesn't? It's all a mystery because... If your car really didn't run later this morning, you'd say, um, does anyone have some jumper cables? And if that didn't work, you'd call AAA, and they'd come, and they'd take the vehicle to somebody who knows how to fix it, right? That's what you would do. You wouldn't abandon your vehicle or just resign, that's how it is. Well, that's what this deep and wide sermon series is all about is that there are people who, just like us in our contemporary day, have, have noticed that it's not going anywhere, that the church isn't growing, and they, they've looked at it and have studied it. And it, it's all from the same foundation that every Christian begins with, that it is the Holy Spirit who calls and gathers and enlightens the one true church on earth. It is the Holy Spirit who gives this gift of faith as the preaching and, and hearing of the good news and the message of Jesus. That's Romans 10, 17. It starts with the foundation that Jesus himself is the one who grows his church. But just like nobody in this room, looking around, nobody built their own car. Nobody designed it. Nobody certainly established the, the rules and the laws of physics on which it runs. All of this was a given. And yet, if you're putting water in the gas, not going to run as designed. Now, I know we're Bible-believing people and we believe in miracles. And if Jesus wants your car to run on water, it will, right? <laughs> But normally he uses the, the established laws of physics and natural things that have already been miraculously created by him in the beginning. And so just like your car needs the basic elements, fuel, ignition, and air, so most gatherings of Jesus need some pretty basic elements and ingredients for them to run well. Otherwise, you really are putting water in the gas. Now, those basic elements, I suppose it could be labeled anyway. I happen to have labeled them today. Anticipation, safety, and irresistibility. Now, anticipation is the clear message that an outsider receives from us that says, hey, we knew you were coming today, so we cleaned house. We picked up the toys. We put everything in good order so that when you came, you would have an easy time. And, and then we would help, you know, well, here's where the sanctuary is, and there are the bathrooms. And guess what? We've got some goodies just for you. And, and it takes then this attention to detail. The curb appeal that, hey, the grass is mowed, there's flowers out front, front. There's a hospitality on the inside of friendly faces and warm hugs and glad you're here's. And all of this was from an anticipat anticipatory preparation to, that knew that this place was designed by God to be for you. And so we got everything ready so that you would have the best possible experience that you could have had here with us. We prepared for you. Well, that, that's certainly one key ingredient, but it, there's a couple more that you have to have, and that's safety. And that might surprise some of you to think, safety? And it, it's not something first and foremost on the mind of members because we already feel safe. We know the goodness of the people running the nursery and 
teaching Sunday school. We know that nothing strange or dangerous is going to happen while we're here in these walls. We know we're all loving family here. But they don't know that. And you didn't either the first time you walked into a strange place. Imagine walking into the mosque today or on Friday. You know, it's like, oh, you know. And, and so if a new family were to come and they even have a hint, I mean even a hint, that their kid will not be safe with us, oh, they're out of here. And, it, and it's not just physical safety, like you're going to lose a limb. It, it's emotional safety. Like, like my kind of people who vote like I do, who think like I do, who look like I do, that we're accepted with a warm welcome here, that we're wanted here, and it's, it's okay for us to be here. Safety. But there's one more ingredient that's really fundamental and basic, but it's, it's much harder to kind of nail down, well, what is that? I mean, we get safety, nobody dies. We, we get curb appeal, dress it up. But irresistibility is very subjective. One person goes, ooh, and another person goes, eh. But you know it when you see it. It's that I gotta come back and be in this place again. I gotta be with you people. Here's how you know you hit it with that person. Is that they go home and they tell their friends, you gotta come with me. Because they're just so jazzed what they found here. You are too. You're going to be so excited when you see what I have found in this place. Yeah, it's subjective, but that's when you know you nailed irresistibility. And that doesn't happen by accident. It takes effort, intentional preparation, safety measures in place, hospitality, all of this. And it's not simply because you had, you know, this experience, a good vibe, correct doctrine. It's, it's all of that, but so much more... And it takes then that, that leadership, it takes that attention to the detail of, well, let's try and, and go just one more step closer to excellence. One step closer to really going, wow, in what we do. Otherwise, it's just one more of those places. And, and you know, you can go to any of them places. And so you're thinking, well, is he going to talk about Jesus? Because I kind of came here for Jesus. Well, okay, Jesus followers. You know what a follower really is, though? It's not somebody who just agrees with doctrine. It's not somebody who knows that Jesus died for them and rose again. It is not just simply that you can confess the creed. Following Jesus is looking to see what he does and then doing what he does in the way that he does it. So, what did he do? Well, look at him. Jesus anticipated there was going to be a rather small man up in a tree on the way to Jericho. And he made preparations. He adjusted his agenda. He could have gone a different way, done a different thing, but no, he intentionally anticipated that and he wanted that to be an awesome thing. And, and the message was received loud and clear. As Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I'm going to your house. And then there was the, huh, what? You were thinking about me, me Jesus? You, you made plans around my life because you cared about me? You, you know my name and what's deepest in my heart that's missing and that you just might be the thing that's going to fill it? Well, what kind of first-time impression do you think all that anticipatory preparation made for a rather small man living a crummy life? Pretty big, right? And, and he calls his friends. And You see, Zacchaeus was living in a very dangerous world. And it wasn't because there's this war all the time and no hospitals. People hated him by name, too. And they hated what he did, and they hated his traitorous tax collecting because he was giving it to the Romans who had, had occupied their land. And, and they just wanted, if they couldn't kill him, they at least wanted to make sure he wasn't accepted in here. But Zacchaeus found a safe place with Jesus. And that with Jesus place, he found irresistible. And you can tell Jesus hit that spot in his life because he invited all of his friends. You got to come to my party. You got to come to my house. Jesus is going to be there. <gasps> Zacchaeus was undone as a human being. He was changed. 
And Jesus said of him, hey, salvation has come to your house today. And then Jesus let everyone know, this is, this is why I anticipated. This is why I've done everything to make it safe for him. This is why I've become so irresistible so that he might, because I've come to seek and to save. Now that, that work of Jesus, that really difficult, hard work, would lead him all the way of giving up his life at the cross. But he, he was, he thought it worth it for Zacchaeus. He thinks it's worth it for you. He thinks it's worth it for the outsider, for the people in India and the people in Tanzania. He thinks it's worth it. And he's still on that, that mission to seek and to save. The question this morning is, will we join him in what he's doing now and in the way that he does it. And so the sermon take home is to, to really take it home and think about, well, how am I personally, where I sit, how can I anticipate the others, the outsider, and how I can care for them? How can I make this a really safe place to be? Not only physically, we don't clobber you here, but emotionally. How can I make it a place that's irresistible as we meet the one who truly is irresistible. And so as we, we take this home personally and then we take it to the meetings that we run or the organizations, the part of the ministry that we do, but here's what we're not going to do. We're not going to use these to beat each other up. This is a long process of becoming such a place. We're not going to scapegoat or say, well, you're the problem. No, we're going to work this together. And as we do so, it's going to take a lot of effort and sacrifice. It's going to take a lot of money. But it's so worth it. And here's how I can be so confident to tell you that it is worth it. Because about 48 years ago, my mother and father, my brother and me, we were outsiders of the church. And there was a congregation, Lutherans of all, and they, they welcomed us in because they anticipated that we might just be coming. And, and they made it safe for us. My, my parents wanted to go back because it was irresistible. They were loved there by those people. And, and now, an outsider stands before you as, an, as one as one who's following Jesus with you. And it, it wouldn't have happened unless there was a group of people that says, well, we're going to follow Jesus the way he does things. Can't we be that kind of place? The Spirit says, yes. Jesus says, yes. The Father who dwells in us says, yes. We, the people, say And our yes will then take the form of this confession. Please stand. As we can